Hey YouTube, today I wanted to do a video on diffusers for a do-it-yourself CO2 system in a planet tank. But first off, I want to take a second to thank my subscribers. I have way more video views than I ever thought I'd have, so thank you for subscribing. Um, there's really d three different tiers of diffusers for a do-it-yourself system. There is the air stone, which is really the most common that you'll see in a do-it-yourself system. Well, that's one of these large air stones, the wooden air stones, or the little green or blue air stones. These are really the the lowest quality, but yet the most common. The, the second tier you'll see is, if, if you've seen them before, you know what I'm talking about. It's a bubble ladder. There's two different plastic lines you'll see with a zigzagging line that goes up that the bubbles will float up very slowly through the aquarium water until they float up to the top of the aquarium. Now, the third, really the highest tier, is a nano diffuser or a glass diffuser. Now, why each of these fits in their respective categories is for one reason. The amount of surface area of the CO2 gas touching the aquarium water at any given time. Now why that makes a difference is because the more surface area you have touching the water at any given time, the more that is allowed to disperse into the aquarium water on the higher levels of CO2 you will get in your water. Um, now why this is the lowest tier is because you have larger bubbles which have less surface area than many smaller bubbles, thus making a nano diffuser with many smaller bubbles more effective. But since these have larger bubbles that travel very quickly through the aquarium water, there's not a large amount of surface area touching the water at any given time. Now with a bubble ladder, you have many large bubbles again, but they're traveling very slowly up through the aquarium water. So you have a lot of time for the bubbles to touch the water and therefore have more CO2 dispersed into the aquarium than you would in something like a uh, air stone. Now with a nano diffuser or a glass diffuser, you have many micro bubbles, so they're very, very small, so you have a lot of surface area touching the water at any given time. They don't rise quite as fast as the airstone, but really what makes the difference is the, the size of the bubbles. Um, the size of the bubbles allows a significantly larger amount of CO2 to disperse into the aquarium at any given time. Now, with a bubble ladder or with a airstone, you're going to have no problem running them. If you can produce CO2 that comes out of that airline and into your aquarium, you know, it's out of your standard system here, and into your aquarium, you have no problem running a bubble ladder or a air stone. They, do, they require no pressure to push them through this system and out into your, um, or hardly any pressure to push it out into your aquarium. Now, with a glass diffuser, that's a different story. This, this makes it a little bit more of an advanced um, device to use, and that's because of this little white piece here. This is the ceramic disc on a glass diffuser, which really makes it work. It has little micropores in here, and I apologize for how nasty it is right now because I haven't cleaned it, but it will make micro bubbles by pushing through this ceramic pore, or it will make smaller bubbles from the large amount of gas below it and the pressure, and it requires a decent amount of pressure to do that. Now, the larger the diffuser, the thicker the disc, so the larger glass diffuser you get, the more pressure it requires. Therefore, in a do-it-yourself system, you can't run a very big diffuser. This is a 0.75 inch diffuser, and that's measured by the diameter from one side to the other. I've heard of people running 1.25 inch before. I actually have one that I think is about 0.9, and that's because you can see it on these. These aren't as big of a difference as my other ones, but they do have deformities. They aren't all uniform. So you can run larger diffusers, but once you get up to like one and a half inch diffuser or two inch diffusers, just forget it. That's for pressurized. Um, same with atomizers. If you've seen them, you have to have a pressurized system to run those. Those are the best, the best, but we're all basically making this out of, you know, cheap bottles for free, so you can't get the best of the best. Um, but a couple little tips and tricks when you're using these. Um, one thing I do is I place my uh, glass diffuser, you kind of see it back there through the foliage, right below um, my filter. And what that allows to happen is you'll see here at the top, I'll try to focus in here, you'll see the bubbles tumbling around in the water. It gives them more time, once again, for the gas to disperse and more time where the gas is touching the water at any given time. This will significantly increase the productivity of your CO2 system, whether you're using an air stone or not. Um, you know, air stone, air diffuser, whatever, it helps. Um, one of the best methods actually out there that doesn't require a diffuser um, is if you have a power head, just run the airline straight into the power head. I actually did this for a short period of time, um, and it's, it works phenomenally well, but I don't do it currently because the CO2 I produced from doing it was so high, I needed to mod completely modify my picture and figure out a new way to do it, but I decided not to do it because it's just too big of a pain. Um, 
But that being said, you can produce massive amounts of CO2 doing that because you almost get 100% dispersion. I did it on one of my tanks. Within three hours, my three or four hours, I had my CO2 levels double or triple, which is just insane. So that is another me method of doing it. Um, another method I've also seen is once again using an airline um, as a do-it-yourself method. People will break up a chopstick and shove it here in the end. That really still qualifies for the you know airstone level of quality. Um, actually, one last caveat I'll throw out for these glass diffusers. Um, I had a system once which I ran which had silicone on it which is actually why I don't use silicone anymore. Um, I was running an airstone running just fine. I decided to try to upgrade the system and run it a little bit higher pressure, you know, modify that mixture, threw on a glass diffuser and it blew the silicone out. The silicone literally blew off and it shot a bunch of air and water out. Um, I mean it didn't make it that big of a mess or anything but it was a, you know, audible hiss and then the system was done. Um, these do require a decent amount more pressure. Um, if you build your system correctly, you shouldn't, you know, have much of a worry about it. So that's really all about do-it-yourself CO2 system diffusers. If you have any more questions, which I'm sure you do, throw them down in the uh, comments, and I'll try to help as I can and make more videos as I can. So thank you, YouTube. Sub if you liked. Uh, have a good one. Bye.